meeting friends and family they were greeting as for me i was a seeking something special from the lord some were skeptic and some were doubting as for me i was a shouting when the holy ghost from heaven filled my longing thirsty soul was going to be describing living for God in terms of video games. Then I realized that's very broad, and there's a lot of things I'd have to cover when doing that. So what came to me was describing a certain part of living for God using a very popular game, Pac-Man. Everyone in here has pretty much heard of Pac-Man. I mean, it's a classic. What I want to describe to you is how we can take this game and kind of look at it in a Christian perspective. So it kind of summarizes how a walk with God works in this certain way that I'm going to be speaking about. For those of you who already understand this stuff, this is a good way to explain it to other people. Go, go ahead and get out of the way. Pac-Man is us, obviously, because uh, we play as Pac-Man. But in terms of this message, Pac-Man is the average Christian. So then you have your maze here. That maze is, is your life. See these little, these little dots that Pac-Man goes around and eats? In the Christian perspective, we're going to say that those are the steps you take and the decisions you make when living for God. These are the things that you do to get closer to Him. So it seems easy enough. Just go around, you collect these things, you level up, all that stuff. Seems pretty easy. But you have enemies. In terms of the Christian walk, we have a enemy, which is obviously the devil. But... The devil doesn't just attack you directly. You don't have to fist fight the devil. Although I did do that once, but that's a story for another time. What we're gonna be describing is these ghosts. These ghosts represent different forms of temptation, whether it be lustful temptation, where it's monetary temptation, where it's even something like being tempted to lie about something, something as simple as that. These are all forms of temptation. 
these things go all around your life trying to catch up to you and trying to trap you. Now what happens in the Pac-Man game if you run into one of these ghosts? You die. Now we're not saying if you succumb to temptation you're gonna die. We're not, we're not saying that. Temptation will damage your walk with God. And whenever you run into one of these ghosts in the Pac-Man game, that damages your chances of winning the game because it takes one of your lives. We can't take on these things head on by ourselves because if you try to run into a ghost as Pac-Man, you're gonna die because any contact with this immediately kills you. Same way a temptation if we're not focusing on God, if we don't have God with us. If we go head first into temptation, we're gonna succumb to it because we don't have the strength to be able to resist temptation. I know we think we do, and trust me, I have thought that I, I did, and I found out the hard way that I do not have the mental strength to resist temptation. What you need to do is get to these little power pellets at the corners of these maps. These power pellets represent the Word of God. So whenever these things are coming at you, and you get trapped in one of these corners, when you're playing the game, your immediate reaction is, I need to get to a power pellet so that I can fight back. Because in the game, when you get one of these power pellets, that's when you're able to kill these ghosts. They become blue and fragile. They can easily be wiped out. So whenever we get cornered by these temptations and we don't see a way out, we need to go to the Word of God and fight back with that. Because when we have God and we have His Word and the wisdom that it provides, we know how to beat the temptation and we know how to get past it. You'll see that there's a limit on these power pellets. There's not a limit on God's Word. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you use it at the times that you need to use it. Let me clarify that a little bit. What I'm saying is don't be expecting to just go straight into contact with temptation. Don't go picking a fight with it. If you see one of these things coming at you, you see there's all these different routes that you can go around. If you see temptation coming to you, you take another route. You get around it. That's the whole point of this big maze right here is the fact that there are other routes you can take to get around these things. So don't go head first into, into conflict with these temptations because the more that you just put yourself in that space, the more you're gonna run out of that strength that you need to fight back that you have with God because you're constantly putting yourself in that situation. And eventually, after enough exposure to these temptations, you start to think, well, these things aren't that bad. I mean, kind of lose that, that mentality to keep fighting it. You just kind of give in to it because, I mean, you've been in it enough. It doesn't seem like it's a bad thing, so you just go along with it. What this message was meant to do for you is to show you how to avoid temptation and what to do when you are cornered by temptation. The way that you see, like, let's take me, Ethan and Mallory, for example. If you'll see us in certain situations, in certain crowds and things like that, you'll notice that there are a lot of things we don't listen to. There's a lot of things we don't watch. There's a lot of things we don't talk about. The reason we do that is because those things bring in temptation. If we watch something that has anything uh, sexual in it, that brings about lustful temptation. If we have any conversations that are negative towards another per person, that brings up temptation to gossip. So what we do is we avoid those things, just as you're supposed to do in this Pac-Man game, when you avoid these ghosts. That's what we as Christians are meant to do. We're meant to avoid these temptations. And if we know that there's temptation within something, we do our best to avoid that. But you're not always gonna be able to avoid the temptation. So that's why you need the word of God so that you can fight back and defeat that temptation. Does that all make sense to y'all? All right. That's all I have for this message. I'm, I'm glad that was well received. I was hoping that I could explain it pretty well. We got Mallory's arts and crafts thing. so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Mallory, and she's going to show us her God's Garden craft. I like to do crafting, but I like to do crafting. <laughs> My craft is outside, technically, but I wanted to kind of show the basis of what this craft is about, the meaning behind it, and then we're going to have fun. <laughs> the scriptures I wanted to start with, because I usually start with getting some of the scriptures that kind of go based off of it. John 12, verses 35 to 36. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. 
Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness knows not whither he goes, while he have the light believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. So, basis. Jesus is the light of the world. I think all of y'all kind of have heard that before. Or in this instance, I'm going to call him the first sunflower. It's almost like that he was planted by God as a baby, uh, and he grew into what was the first sunflower. He was pretty much to grow up and be the first thing to stand out in the midst of a world that didn't understand him. So as he stood out, he happened to bloom, and when he bloomed, he got to grow, and he planted other seeds, which happened to be apostles. And then they grew, and they bloomed, and they planted other seeds. That's kind of how the early church grew. And the more we grow in him, we're almost the same kind of concept. As more, uh, the more we grow, the more we look like Jesus, the light of the world, and the more we become the children of light, or in this case, a sunflower. So one of the fun facts about sunflowers is they follow after the sun. They like to look at the sun, they face the sun. And as children of light, we follow after God, we look for God. And so when sunflowers are exposed to chemicals, harsh environments, put in places where they shouldn't be, you could imagine that they would not bloom, they would not be as tall, they wouldn't look like sunflowers, they'd be withered. They wouldn't know where to look, they wouldn't have a light, they wouldn't look like their most beautiful potential and they would never be able to plant seeds. But when you allow yourself to bloom with the infilling of the Holy Ghost, you're able to plant seeds, to give others the chance to bloom and to give others the chance to look towards the light. So it's not necessarily just the fact of you being able to plant and be bloomed, but the fact is, is that once you are able to bloom, you can show the light to others, which is a good thing. Without blooming, without the Holy Ghost, you are like grass sitting among the other pieces of grass. But when you look towards God, absorb his light and his ways, you can grow closer to him just like a sunflower grows, grows toward the sun and as, as it gets taller. And eventually, being filled with the Holy Ghost, you can blossom and share your growth with others, which plants seeds for others to have the opportunity to grow and blossom themselves. So don't settle on just being the grass just because there's more grass in the world than there is sunflowers. Not because they're just there's more of it and you're not standing out as much, so you don't make a big fuss of anything. But settle on wanting to rise above all that is natural. Rise above what people, uh, what the other grass looks like. Rise above that and be the sunflower that you were meant to be and follow after God and become a sunflower in God's garden. I had two scriptures that I wanted to end with, which was 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so now we can go outside and make beautiful sunflowers that resemble what we're going to become. Yay! <laughs> I'm a copy of this one.
Minion me up. My hand was this yellow all the time. Don't you care? Your machine was like yellow all the time. No! Good job, Kitty! Come back, Solomon! Come back, Solomon! Come No. Very good, Mallory. You did a great job. <laughs> did you not test it, any of the yellow? No, I would have thought that all the colors would have came off. <laughs> okay, hello, y'all. Um, I'm gonna try to be thin. You already know that. You are? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk to y'all about um, something called the puzzle pieces of God's plan. God's plan is simple, although it can be hard to apply to our own lives. Can anyone get an amen to that? Amen. amen. It's mainly because of something called free will. Free will gives us the ability to make our own choices, and most of the time we choose the wrong ones because we're human. And you can blame our ancestors, Adam and Eve, for that. I will say this, though, that through Christ, all things are possible. Ever since Jesus came, you know, he made a better way for us to receive him into our hearts and be saved. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, because without his plan, we cannot do it alone. We cannot live this life without him. We cannot walk correctly without him. I mean, we can't even go to school without him. I mean, road rage is a big problem these days. <laughs> I mean, especially if you live in Ruston. <laughs> now, I know it's 2024, but... You cannot tell me you ain't never done no puzzle in your life. Okay, well, we have two people, but we're not going to call them out. <laughs> so, from, other from the other two people, um, do you ever find that when you get to the end of a puzzle and you're missing that one piece, do you know how frustrating that is? Yeah. It's aggravating. You just want that one piece. It's all you need. <laughs> because we want the joy of the accomplishment that we have finished this long puzzle because puzzles take time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes time to work on puzzles. I mean, it's not like an online puzzle where you just keep pushing the hit button when you can't find it. <laughs> I will say this, that's just, puzzles are kind of like the same way with God's plan for our lives. Now, who here knows the puzzle pieces of God's salvation? Now, I know that's a weird thing to call because it's called the plan of salvation, but um, the way I've seen it in my head, and I'm a visionary, is a puzzle pieces to God's salvation. So who here can give me, like, there's four pieces in the puzzle. Repent. Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. There you go. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. And nobody knows the other one? Okay. Here's the thing about God's plan, is that if we don't apply it to our lives. Um, it's like turning down a dead end road and trying to get to Walmart, but you turn down a dead end road and you ignore the sign. You're like, wait a minute, the road ended. What happened? I mean, it's it's kind of like that. Um, that's just the way I see my brain. So, but if you listen to the signs and apply them to your life, you'll notice that you're gonna get to Walmart. Joshua 22, verse 5 says, But take diligent heed to do the commandments and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God, walk and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. What's one way you can apply God's plan to your life? You love him and cherish him with all your heart. Now, who here knows how hard it is to give the Lord all your heart? 
That's where that free will comes in place. It's annoying sometimes. <laughs> Actually, all the time. But the first one, you have repent. 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 Now, are you going to repent if you don't believe in God? No. Why not? Because what's the point to say I'm sorry to someone you don't believe in, you know? Mm -hmm. So you also have to believe. So that also goes with the first puzzle piece. You notice how they just fit together? I'm so crafty. <laughs> <laughs> Baptism in the name of Jesus. What is something that you notice? Is it fitting together? Mm -hmm. So you believe, you repent, and you get baptized. Baptism is whenever Jesus washes all your sins away after you repented of them. So you're completely white as snow now. The next step, the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. This is God's gift to us. This is what he left to help us guide. This basically, this is his tool and his help. It basically allows God in our heart to work from the inside out. Now, a lot of people today want to work from the outside in. When you work from the outside in, uh, you kind of get to this image of, well, the outside looks good, so I don't have to fix anything else. But you work from the inside out, and that's what God does. And then by the time it gets to the outside, you know, the inside's not a lie. You know, it's, it's showing the outside, you know, and that's kind of how God teaches us and molds us. And here's the other step, and a lot of people miss this one. And, I mean, I've missed it for a long time. But once you've received all these, now you got to do what? Live for God. For God. Live for God. Now, these are four simple steps that God has given us. Um, you must live for him. That's with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Now, that is very hard to do. But through Christ, all things are possible. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Acts 2.38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as the... Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the promise is unto who? You. And to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So that tells me there that it didn't stop on the day of Pentecost. To your children and to all that are far off. Because if it stopped on the day of Pentecost, it would have just said to you. Because everybody was there was the only one that allowed to get it. But um, you find today today's world that people are still receiving the Holy Ghost. These are the steps to Christ. It's hard to live for God when your heart's not fully in it. But that's okay because God is just waiting for us to fully submit to his plan and to let him work from the inside out. And how do we do that? We believe. We worship. We get down every day and we just talk to God. I mean, I'm not telling you you're going to get fixed like that. That's, that's, not how, that's not what happened to me. I mean, <laughs> it took years for the Lord to finally get me. And I mean, I'm still not even where I, you know, I'm still not where I know God wants me to be, but I'm still growing. That's the difference. And just going through life constantly sinning and not repenting for it and just, you know, going through and then saying, okay, God, I'm sorry for this, but keep on going. I'm sorry for this. You know, instead of, God, I'm sorry for this. I'm going to go this way because this is the way you're wanting me to go. And this is a smart choice for me. And this is what's going to save me because I'm trying to get to Walmart. And there's a dead end road, but there's a sign that says, so this way is Walmart, but this way looks the right way. So I'm going to go this way, but there's a dead end road sign, you know. So I just encourage y'all, you know, to remember the importance of putting them all together in God's puzzle of his plan. Because, you know, God loves us so much. You know, he, he went to the cross for us. He died for us. He was raised again. And in living for God comes hopefulness, peacefulness, and above all. And what does that go back to the puzzle of, you know, just doing a regular puzzle? When you finish a puzzle completely, what do you feel? Accomplishment. You feel peaceful feel great. You want to show everybody. And that's where Mallory's plan comes in, where she uh, talked about the, you know, planting the seeds. And of course, with Brother Jonathan, with his avoiding temptation, how do you avoid that? Living for God, because God's going to protect you and hold you and keep you. And that's all I have for y'all. I hope you received this. Um, if you have any questions, you know, we'll love to give you a Bible study, you know, um, come to a church service if you don't have a church, you know, um, 
We have all these different options. Who's ready for some games? Nobody touch the fire. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. And the quality on your phone is really good. Thank you. That's a four. That's a four. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Extra challenge. I mean, the box is that spoon. It's like turning on that dead end road, okay? It's not my fault. <laughs> oh, and that's an extra large spoon. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to get the extra small. Let me take a look back. No. Well, then, it, it's long. Put the spoon in the fire. Look, catch the fire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. oh, that was good. But <laughs> we tried the egg race and you eat watermelon. <laughs> By the way, these eggs are not frozen, so they will bust. Yeah, these aren't the frozen eggs we had at the first one. Mario Kart music. I'm gonna edit that in. Start now. What? <laughs> Abigail, stop cooking that egg. <laughs> Good job, Becca. Huh? Just put it up there on the Ooh. Now your egg. What are we doing? That's cheating. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Continue. I want to see her try to go lower. Oh, 
story? Mallory salty after that. There you go, Solomon. Gotta make it in the bucket. My turn. Ethan. <laughs> there you go, Ethan. Jonathan's dreams were just shattered. You didn't see that. <laughs> No, you won't. <laughs> Kick it into a bucket. <laughs> All right, Johnny, you ready? Yep. Go long. Huh? Ah! You were just going to stand there? Yeah, it would have been a funny shot. I want to read this. <laughs> you... I wasn't recording you. <laughs> you did it as soon as I turned away. No. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Oh goodness. <laughs> there you go, Rosalie. Hey, she got the middle one. There you go, Mallory. your ring. I told her to Will you me. marry her? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, don't hate the player, hate the game. What? You were supposed to do it. Can't find love these days. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get close up on it. That is a beautiful ring. <laughs> beautiful ring. I don't know how I'm supposed to work with this, but it's okay. I better stay at home, mom. Yeah. Um, Ma'am, you, you need to pay for that now. No! <laughs> <laughs> You snooze your lose. She. What? Can we do a Jericho march with the tiki torches? A Jericho march with the tiki torches. Oh lord, we're gonna accidentally make the church fall down. Please do not. You can record. I can hand you the camera. Okay. You're so meek. The Bible says, "Be humble and meek, giant."
<laughs> then Mallory <laughs> shows up. <laughs> it's a goodie bag. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You should read that, Abigail. I actually have. I have received it at least eight times. That's like, I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> Show me your prize for winning limbo. Oh goodness. I'm gonna have to put a seizure warning on that one.